Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to another tutorial where we are going to take all of our hard work and bake it into Substance Painter. So in the past, we have this axe in Maya, which by the way, you can download for free at academicphoenixplus.com so you can follow along. We took this and we brought it into ZBrush where we detailed it. And now I'm going to show you guys how to bake all of this in Substance Painter and also texture it. But first we need is a low poly object and a high poly object to create a good bake. My low poly object is this axe and it's also UV map. So please make sure that anytime you're about to bake something that your object is UV mapped. And this is our high poly object, which has millions and millions of polygons. So in this case, it's got 5 million. So what I need to do is actually combine all of these pieces because right now in ZBrush, and if you watch the previous tutorials, we actually separated these so we can detail it in ZBrush, but now we need to combine them together. And to do that, we just need to go to merge. So over here in our sub tool, let's scroll down and we have a merge right here. Select the top layer and you can just click on merge down. It's going to ask you, this is undoable. That's okay. Click OK. It's thinking really hard because it's going to be combining them together. Merge down again and again until you have one final, just one layer left, which is the complete axe. Great. Let's go ahead and export this. So let's scroll back up here. We're going to go to export and I'm going to call this my axe high poly and save. Well, you'll take a look at here and you can see that it's taking its sweet time. Whoops, there was a line right here that was orange, which means that it was thinking. So ZBrush does take some thinking. And then when I go back in here, you'll notice that I have an Axe High Poly. Now I did export earlier an Axe OBJ, which is the low poly version. So just to make sure that we're all in the same page here, I'm going to select my object here, go to File, Export, Selection. And this is going to be an OBJ and it's going to, I'm going to place it in assets with the high poly so I can keep it all together. And just to make it clearer, this is going to be my low poly. So now I'm going to have a high poly axe and a low poly axe. Great. Looks good. Now let's go into substance. I'm actually very excited about this because it takes work to do the low poly, it takes work to do the high poly. And now we're bringing it to substance, which is going to make it all awesome and complete. So I'm excited. All right, let's go to file new. I'm going to choose a PBR metallic roughness. I'm going to increase my uh, document resolution to 2048. I'm going to click on select, find my axe, look at all those files. Go to my assets. I'm going to bring in the low poly. This is important because the high poly is where all our detail information is. So grab that low poly, open sesame, and then click OK. Just like that, we're going to get our axe. Let's go over here to 3D, 2D. So we have our UV so we can see how the UVs are laid out and how everything looks so far. And so far so good. Okay. I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to rename this. Let's call it X. And the first thing we do in Substance Painter is go to te Texture Set Settings. We're going to scroll down and hit Bake Mesh Maps. Let's go ahead and change this to 2048. And I like to increase my dilation width. And the reason why is because this is where we're going to import our high poly mesh. So you can see here that it says high definition meshes. So click on this tiny little, what looks like a piece of paper, and you're going to grab your high poly. This is where all of our detail is going to be found. And that's where all the normal maps and information is going to be baked. Let's move on to, I really don't have an ID map, so I'm going to turn off ID. I'm going to go to ambient inclusion and increase my second secondary rays. Same thing for my curvature because I just want high quality and then my thickness as well. I just want a high, high quality map. Once you have all this, just double check. I always double check to make sure 2048 is selected and then click on bake select textures. It's going to do its magic. I can already see some of the cool baking that's happening right now. Look at the occlusion looks nice. Ooh, this is the curvature map. Position and thickness. The more detail in the bake, the better. All right, cool. And just like that, click OK. We have our baked map. Take a look at it, see if there's anything weird going on, but in general, it looks pretty, pretty nice. Yay. So cool. All right, let's go back into layers. And now it's time to actually te texture it. So, you know, we have metalness here, we have wood, we have leather. Let's see what Substance Painter has to provide for us. 
So let's say I want to do metal and up here at the library I can actually type in metal. Now if you want to you can grab iron brush, you can grab all sorts of shaders. Don't forget that you also have a smart material. So under smart materials you also have metalness. And these are a little bit more complicated but it also looks really nice. So it really depends what you want to do. I'm actually going to grab steel rust here because I wanted to make it look like it's got some history, the metal, and then plug it in here. All right, cool. So maybe I like the look of it. It might be too much. Let me grab something else. Steel ruined. I'm just kind of winging it as I do this. Well, wow, it's pretty. I can probably change a couple of things there, but let's go with this one because it's got a little bit of information and noise and um, the scratches and everything, but extra scratches and the ones that created, but also it doesn't, it doesn't look too ruined and I can also tweak it. So what I mean by that is that I can open up this steel rust surface, open it up and I can play around to see what do these things do. So for example, I'm going to turn this off and on and I personally don't see any major difference. So I'm going to go to rust. So that's the one that creates this interesting looking rust. Then I've got edges. Let's see what edges does. So you can see that it creates a nice edge here. That's kind of neat. Here's my metallic scratches. And then I have my base metal. Nice. So if I click on this and let me bring this up a little bit, we can scroll down. And if you want to, you can see that we've got a really nice metallic here. If you want to increase the roughness, it can. I'm going to make it a little bit shinier. So I'm going to decrease my roughness just a little bit. Nothing major because I do want it a little bit shinier. Make it look a little bit more metallic. Let's take a look at the metal here. You have metal scratches as well. Again, this is the metal. So if you want it to be muted, you can, or you can just kind of decrease the roughness. Again, it's really fun. I would highly recommend that you guys play around with it. Uh, you can see that the height map, I can actually increase the height map in a particular direction. So just kind of play with it a little bit. So how do we get it to just affect the metal part? Well, let's go back up to the folder. I'm going to collapse it. I'm going to right click on it and create a black mask. This is going to make it look like it doesn't, there's nothing there. But what it means is that black, you can't see white, you can see. So if I scroll down, you'll notice that I'm using a brush that's currently white. So if I start painting in here, the metalness will show up. Now you're more than welcome to just kind of paint, doo, 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 doo. but what I'm going to do instead is select this tool right here, which will select polygons. So that means I can go in and start selecting polygons. You can also click this one, which will actually click the model. So this is actually faster. And just like that, I have selected the metal. Now you'll notice that I accidentally also selected this area here, which is actually the handle. So I'm going to turn this into black and just kind of go in and deselect it because I really don't need the handle to have that information. So really fast, I can get my metal to reveal itself. So let's go back into paint mode. Here's my axe so far. All right, let's find some wood. So I'm going to go back in here, go back to the regular materials and we have some wood. We have nice quality wood, regular wood. I mean, I can drag it in and see what it looks like. So the wood looks like this. It's actually pointing the wrong direction, the grain, but I can always change that. But let's see what, what's in the smart material. So in the smart material, we have different types of wood as well. So you can also try it and drag it and see if maybe this one is a better look for the wood itself. Um, I'm okay with the wood, just regular wood rough. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to scroll down or scroll. Well, just look for rotation and you can rotate this 90 degrees. Now you can type it into, by the way. So that's looking really nice. Again, you're more than welcome to go in and kind of play around. Do you want this to be rougher? Do you want it to be shiny? I don't want shiny wood. That doesn't make any sense. Um, you have scratches and we have a couple of other parameters, but in general, I'm actually very happy with this. I can maybe scale it, um, scale it up a little bit so that I get a little bit more information on the wood. Something like that. And again, we just wanted to affect the handles. So I'm going to right click on my wood. I'm going to create a black mask. And just like I did before, instead of grabbing the model though, I'm going to grab this one, which is going to grab the faces. And with that, I can click and drag, oh, make sure that you are in the color white and just kind of select those faces. Just be very cautious because you may accidents, accidentally select something else. But this is a really nice way 
of controlling where your stuff is going to be. All right. And because everything's been UV mapped correctly and the geometry, the topology is actually pretty clean, then it's pretty easy to put this texture on here. All right. That is so far what we have. Let's take a look. We have wood. We have metal. Really cool. All right. Let's look for leather. Right? Right here. I'm going to do leather. We have all types of different leather. Uh, let's see. We have plastic fake leather, I guess. And let's see. We have this one, which I'd like. So I'm going to drag it to the top. Ooh, and it's got some scratches on it, which I love. So just to make my life easier, let's go ahead and add a black mask. I'm going to create, uh, click on this fancy tool and click on this window so we can start making our selection. Oh, we got to focus on this part too. Let's not forget those details. And let's go in. We might have to get in close. Be very cautious. You can also just individually click if you want to. It's a little harder, but but at least it'll be more accurate. Let me scroll down to the bottom. Let me grab these guys here. At the end, we're trying to avoid anything white because that definitely will be very noticeable. Let me go over here. Whoops. Be careful, don't get too excited like I just did. Like, yeah, put everything in red. Ah, the last two are going to be stubborn. Let me grab these two then. It's making a click and drag motion. It's really nice. So easy. Way easier than painting, that's for sure. All right, let's grab these. Looks good. I'm excited. All right, so we're missing the top and the bottom, but let's see what this looks like. Fancy. Um, I think the leather can definitely be smaller because that's pretty thick. So let's open this up and we can see we have damages here. We have edges, which I like. We have our leather pattern and that's probably the one we want to change the most is the leather pattern. So let's select this and we can increase the scale. Oop, not too much because then that ruins it. There we go. So I think Maybe an eight would be a good number. Oops, it thinks I did 84. I'm an eight, <laughs> something like that. Cool. I do want maybe the color to be a little bit more saturated. So here's my base color. Let's go ahead and grab this and just make it a little bit more red. I feel like it needs to be a little bit more rough. After all, it is beaten up. And let me see. And I feel like the damage needs to be more. So I'm going to go to my damages and see where I can change the damage. So for example, maybe I want the damage to be a little bit more indented so it's more noticeable. We can also select the mask and it does have a generator. So with this generator, we can probably add a little bit more wear and tear on it. We can decrease the contrast or increase it. So this is the way that you can control your damage. All right, maybe that's a little too much. Let me calm that down a little bit. Okay, so we now have the wood, we have our steel, and we also have our leather. So it's looking really nice. And, you know, we can keep going forever, but I'm going to go ahead and stop because I do want to show you guys how to export this and bring it into Maya. So let's go ahead and save this, though. File, save as. I have my assets folder. I'm going to just make one called Substance. So I can always go back to it if I need to. And let's go to File, Export Textures. All right, so let's place it somewhere we're going to find. This is my axe folder for Maya. So I'm going to go to my source images and I think I'll be fine here. Uh, PNGs are fine with me. We can always go here and we can remove anything we don't need. So for example, I might not want emissive. I don't see the point of having an emissive map. You want to double check to make sure this is 2048 by 2048. We're going to get a base color. We're going to get a roughness. Uh, we're going to get metallic, normal, and height. And let's go ahead and export. Just like that. Cool. Hop into Maya. Now, I showed you guys a previous tutorial where Substance does provide a shortcut. So you don't have to create your own textures. You can actually download it. So take a look at that when you guys, uh, if you want to quickly 
assign textures from subsystems. This makes things really easy. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. Uh, this is Arnold. I'm going to select multiple maps. Here are all my maps. Select, apply. Right click existing material AI standard surface. Press the number six on your keyboard if you don't see it. Second, I missed one. Let me grab that. Let's create a plane. Let's assign an Arnold light physical sky. And I personally like to increase my intensity of my light a little bit because it's it can get a little dark. And I'm going to go ahead and render it by going to Arnold render. And there it is, our fancy axe. I'm going to go to show lights so I can actually see my axe. Let's relabel this. And I'm just going to confirm that all of my files have a color balance of alpha is luminance. And I also remember it doesn't read the normal maps very well. So I'm going to go to geometry. Here's bump mapping. Click on this little output. Make sure alpha luminance is on. Make sure it's raw. But you need to go to one node up, which is here. And you want to make sure that you flip the R. It's going to be a very subtle change, but it's a it's a change that is for the better. And I'm going to take a snapshot of that. All right. Now, one of the things you may notice is that this does use displacement. So we have to take a look at the hypershade. So it's a little sphere with a white circle on it. And you'll notice that it does have a displacement map. So if I right click on this and go to graph network, you'll notice that I can click on the set and you'll notice that it does have a displacement map. So a displacement map is really helpful for really large things like a lot of specific detail that stick out, but I actually don't need it. So I'm going to break that connection. Let's see what that looks like. And I moved the light a little bit, but before we were getting a lot of noise in our uh, model and it was in fact affecting the silhouette. But with this, we can now get the nice normal map that we were getting earlier and it's a lot cleaner we can see it better. So that makes me a lot happier and I still feel it's kind of dark. So let's brighten it up by selecting that light and let's make it to 1.5 and see if we can get a brighter render. Let's get a good angle of the sun here because I really want to try to get that highlight. And there we go. Still feels kind of dark. I'm also go, going to go down to camera and turn this off, the camera to zero, the visibility camera to zero so that I only get the ax and the ground. And not only do we not have the distracting background, we can also get an alpha map, which means that I can take this in Photoshop and change the color. Now, if you guys want it, you can always create a plane back here and just, you know, place it back here. So let me go. I'm in perspective. Um, select the camera, put a keyframe on it. So if I move around. No problem, I can always put it back. Okay, let's see what that looks like with the gray background. And I find the, the ground distracting, so let's go ahead and hide it. So I'm going to select that ground plane and hide it, Control H. And let's see what that looks like. All right, so I tweaked it a little bit, but this is what I have so far. We have the nice wood, we have the axe, and I I think I forgot the top. Oh yeah, I did. So no problem. I can always take it back into substance and fix that. So I can't believe I forgot that. That's kind of weird that I did that, but at least in this angle, it looks great. <laughs> I will go back and tweak it, but that is how you can bake a object using a low poly object from Maya, like the one we have right here. So just as an ex as a demonstration, I'm going to duplicate this, move this to the side and assign the Lambert to it. All right, so this is my low poly object, my low poly with the nice textures and normal maps. And just to show you guys, I'm going to duplicate this again, move this to the side, move my camera a little bit because I'm going to assign a new material. I'm going to choose the wireframe. So choose AI wireframe. I can go in and change my triangles to polygons. So then we get the whole shebang. We're going to get the final product, the 3D model, and also the wireframe. So let's take a look at that render. I am a stickler for high. Sorry, I'm just going to keep going and going until I get a really nice quality presentation. But what I want to show you also is how to get rid of that noise. You see how noisy that is? Let's go to our render settings up here with the clapper on the gear. I'm going to increase my settings to four, three, three. I don't have really any transmission or subsurface or direct. 
I am going to enable this and change this into like a six so that it renders higher quality. The render time will take longer. In this case, it only took nine seconds, but I'm also going to move my camera just a little bit so it doesn't cut off the bottom of the ax. Let's render it in, in a higher quality. So I already have a picture of it right here, but let's see what that looks like. And by the way, I'm hitting pause so you guys don't have to watch this render. Um, it's kind of boring watching something render. So uh, for you, it will be a fraction of a second. But for me, we'll see how long it takes. I'll be right back. That only took 54 seconds, which is awesome. So let's compare before, which is kind of very noisy. And this is a lot cleaner render. So it's always nice to have nice, clean render. So if you guys were following this tutorial from beginning to end, starting from the axe, all the way to Substance Painter texturing and also rendering, you now have a final piece. This can actually go into your portfolio. You can show off your wireframe, you can show the original model, you can show the textures, the textured versions. So there you go, guys. I hope you found that helpful. Definitely enjoyed creating this axe and showing you guys the cool things that ZBrush, Substance Painter, and Maya can provide for you. Let me know what you think by leaving a comment below. Don't forget to take a look at academicphoenixplus.com where you can download this axe for free and you can also follow along. It's UV mapped and ready to go. Also subscribe to my channel. That would be or so if you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. That is a message from you to me, letting me know that you like these videos and you want to see more. Also share these videos. If you think somebody out there could use uh, a hand on understanding how to bring create something in Maya, detail it in ZBrush, bake it in substance and texture it and also final render in Maya. Please share this tutorial so hopefully they will get a lot out of it. Again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Keep creating and I will see you next time.